and we are live. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to week 182 of the AP and New Principles Academy. As you see, the camera is not what it usually is. I have technical difficulties, but we are here. Um, let me see who's in the building and I'll explain some of these difficulties. Just work with me. Tashika Truesdale is in the building. Scott Wiley, Tremaine Duncan, Sheikah Houston's in the building. That's Dr. Sheikah Houston. Dr. Rella Hicks is in the building. Otis Kitchen the second. Principal Otis Kitchen the second. AP Patrick Lawrence is in the building. Rodney Richards is in the building. Alicia Fisher is in the building. Michael Benton is here. He's in the building. Jacqueline Harriet's in the building. I'll see her in Nova Scotia pretty soon next week. Jasmine Harris is in the building. Lysandra Brackens, Rashad Davis. Hit the share button. Hit the retweet button. Let them know we're here. We don't look the same on the on the camera, but we we here. We here. That's all I can say. We here. I'm a little disappointed, but we here. We here. Uh, Yaz Dillard's in the building. Stacy Joseph, Jennifer Desmond, Dot McKeever Jeter is in the building. Central Hicks, Demetrius Scott, Ronald Orr's in the building. I haven't seen you, good brother. Good to see you. Sean Hurts in the building. Always, always keeping that knowledge coming in. And, and, and I didn't get to see men, much of you this morning with these technical issues, Sean and, and, and Sheikah and Tammy, but I know y'all took care of business. Sandra uh, Kraus Ayers is in the building. Cynthia Farmer, Mike Williams, Central Hicks, Edwin Garcia, Jersey in the house. Christopher Ellie, Stacey L. Joy, Nikki Tolbert, they're all here. Hit the share button, hit the retweet button. Let them know, let them know, let them know. We are here. We are here. Let me see what time it is. I'm getting ready to shut this down in a minute. Hit the share button, hit the retweet button. Let them know we are in the building. Um, by the way, um, if, if, if my sound, if my audio is not good, let me know. I think it's good. I think I got a strong signal, but if it's not, or my video for that matter, let me know. Just let, put something in the comment. Uh, Yolanda McKinney's here. Kimberly Carruthers, Lat Latasia Berry is in the building. Jennifer Desmond's in the building. Lou Saunders is here. Um, where we at? David Adams, my brother. Good morning to you, sir. Um, Demetrius Scott, I said, golf R W T Angeles said i sound good to ronjo rosales all right we sound good looking clear just on the phone man i don't like doing this on no phone at least with the iphone you could flip this thing and get the full screen I, i'm on an android so shame on me right i gotta do it this way my mother jumped on here she said it's good so let me say to y'all man uh formally because so, i gotta jump into it good morning greetings and welcome to week 182 of the AP and New Principles Academy. And, and as I always start out, and I'm always start this way, I just gotta ask you, I wanna do that wellness check, y'all. Y'all in some, some, some heavy duty work that you do as leaders, as aspiring leaders, so therefore whatever it is you do now, um, you do some heavy duty work. So I just wanna ask you the question that I ask every week, how are you? How you feeling? Are you good? Are you OK? Right. You're feeling strong or you're feeling a little let down. You're feeling a little not yourself, whatever it is. Time out. I just need you to plug the phone. in. I ain't, I'm on live. Yeah, I'm on live. I'm on live. So if, if you could just get me plugged in though, the phone so it doesn't die. Remember the phone? I don't have I don't have juice. I'm, I'm losing my battery. I'm sorry about that, y'all. Technical difficulties here in Montego, baby. We we here, we here. So let me, yeah. See, I'm I'm not charging. I was eighty. I was eighty one when y'all was here. Don't let that slide on the floor either. It's gonna pull my phone. Yeah, we dealing with some stuff, y'all. Um, yeah, just just make sure this don't slide on the floor for me, Sherelle. So let me let me let me. You know, we in real time, and y'all know. Could could you get Sherelle? Get grab this for me, so it don't fall on the floor. Cause it's, it'll take my whole phone with me with it let me let me let me say this to y'all before before i bring up my guests and I, I i got a bonus guest today too who's got this new book out and i'm I, I guess he's in the wings i can't see backstage the way i could um if i was on my my computer so but anyway here i am y'all know my birthday's tomorrow man i'm 63 tomorrow right yeah yeah you know i come out here every year but you know um just 
technical stuff, man. So, so it's not happening with the phone. And you know, these videos, they matter to me once they're posted. And this is not going to have the same quality as far as video quality. But you know something, y'all? I want y'all to hear me real well. You know how serious I take this academy. Y'all know that, right? You know that this, this, this means a heck of a lot to me because we are literally sharing this work, providing this work to APs and principals worldwide right all over america different parts of the world so but but on this day i gotta look at you through this phone but you know something and this is the lesson. this is the lesson right here despite that and i'm not going to scream because i'm in a hotel right i'm not home on this one despite that i want you to know something you see my face you see me smiling that's because i'm on fire regardless sherelle you know it's not plugged in right all right I'm on fire regardless, y'all. I really am, right? But but now that the folks from the work here in the hotel have left the room, I'm not. I'm, I'm I am a little ticked off, right? Because we planned this thing like months in advance so that there'll be no glitches. And now they said they changed the computer system and it can't accept my laptop. So I'm on this phone and I can't get a charge to my phone because there's something wrong with the electricity. But see, so it's issues, 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 issues. But I'm good, y'all. And see, that's where you got to be. You know, like if, if plan A don't work, go to plan B. Now, in my case, plan B didn't work either. So I'm in like C or D. That's where you got to be. Right. That's where you got to be. So I'm just using my real time experience. This birthday weekend, I'm supposed to be fired up and doing this on the birthday weekend in Montego Bay, Jamaica here. But I ain't got what I paid for. I paid $370 to be in here, y'all. You know I'm getting that refund. <laughs> but anyway, y'all, let me do my rundown real quick. Hit the share button. Hit the retweet button. Man, I got a guru in the building today. I got it. I got. I got this other brother. I, I guess he's in the wings. I'll find out in a minute. But uh, let me let me go through this first. Shout out to Capitol Hill High School staff in Oklahoma City uh, under the leadership of Principal Sherry Gately. I was there the other day. And uh, man, we had a good time, man. We had a good time. And I hope that my words that I shared with them is going to take that school to another level. And then shout out to the New Jersey Principal Supervisors Association, man. I was there with them um, Thursday night, I think it was, something like that. And no, nah, it wasn't Thursday because I was here Thursday. It was, it was, I guess it was like Wednesday or something, whatever it was. We had a great time with principals from all over the state of New Jersey, man, just bringing that information to them, you know. So, uh, glad to see them and you know here we are here we are i'm wondering if there's an incompatibility between that charger and my in in my phone hey, hey kim i know you on here kim bring could you get my charger no no i got no bring my charger down here it's it's next to the bed man because this ain't working mm -mm. this ain't this this thing is not working so kim if you can or, or Sherelle can me go up to the yeah, room. Yeah, yeah. Sherelle will meet you at the room, Kim. Just give her the charger so I can charge it because I'm losing my battery. 215, 215, 215. All right, folks. Kim, just stay put. She'll be there. Hey, y'all, it's different today, y'all. <laughs> but you see, I ain't crying, man, right? I ain't crying. Hit that share button. Hit that retweet button. So welcome to the first timers. First timers, this ain't what it used to be. Usually we, we all organize you know we, we got it going on it's not you know it, it's all right so but first time let's go to the youtube channel ap and new principals academy later on and binge watch make sure you su subscribe and binge watch them 181 previous weeks including this one uh i didn't bring any books along with me as far as the books i've written but you know the books that coincide with this academy are the assistant principal 50 and the assistant principal identity and i should say the aspiring principal 50. so if you don't have any of those books make sure you get them have them as a part of your your professional learning library let me straighten this thing up man have them as your professional learning library you can go to amazon and get yourself a copy of those books yeah y'all y'all should see what i'm working with man you know when you charge the phone the charger goes under the phone and i got the phone propped up so you know i'm you know i'm challenged this morning man god what you doing man you testing me <laughs> you testing me for something later you testing me for something big i see what you're doing god i understand how that works man god testing me for something bigger than this you know so i gotta i gotta roll with it man because he want to see what i'm made out of uh, i got this charger y'all so let me let me see if i could switch this up now it's short though 
Oh, yeah, we, we're up in the sketch right All right. So y'all bear with me a second. We're going to get this interview in because I got this superstar. She got her own challenges, man. She Her flight was canceled. So she in the airport. Um, I got to see if I can balance no, that. So it's something with y'all's electricity. Yeah. Uh, I felt this. Okay. It just went in. It was just in. It was just in. It went in and out. There it is. It's in. It's in. It's in. It's in. That, that means a list of shots. Yeah. All right, so you can keep it there. We good. All right, folks. Um, so 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 hit that share button, hit that retweet button. Hey, uh, hey, Don Parker. I, I don't even know if you there. Let me let me see. No, he's not there. So all right, good. I got a guest here, y'all. Uh, let me let me bring up my guests here. We we, we and we might have to do this again. Uh, Nicole, let me see where we at. Um, there we go. There we go. All right, I see Don too. Hey, 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 Don, hear, hear, listen to me, Don Parker. I, I think you can hear me. Let me do this. Let me do this next week with you because I'm I'm, I'm dealing with some stuff with technical stuff, man. I, I, I got my phone. Um, I can't use my computer, so I got to use my phone. So, Don Parker, uh, let's do this next Saturday for that preview of your book because I got to maximize my time with my guests. Because she, yeah, Don, can you hear me? Give me a thumbs, thumbs up if you can hear me. All right, yeah, Don. Let's do this next Saturday, right? I'll, I'll reach out to you because I'm. She got to run. Her flight was canceled, and 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 and, and I'm, I'm on this phone, and it's 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 a mess here, right? <laughs> so next Saturday morning we'll get it done right. I uh, appreciate you, brother. All right, y'all, let's go. Um, I got I got I got the big time guest in the room. This is Nicole S. Turner. I call her the instructional coaching guru. <laughs> And that's exactly what she is, an instructional coaching expert. And and, and before I read her bio, I just um, I, I, I brought her up a second too soon because I'm, I'm not organized. I mean, on paper, I am. But, you know, I'm all over the place. You know, I'm, I'm talking to my wife and she's in the room sleep. Right. So, you know, this this is a little different, man. But some of y'all, y'all, some of y'all need to learn from this, maybe. You know, like like me communicating with my wife, with the hotel folks on my side, trying to plug in this phone, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, it's it's like you got you got to make do, man. You can't shut down. Like I can't say like, ah, right, we ain't going to do this this week. Right. You got you got you to figure it out. So even though you guys are not necessarily public speakers, but you have situations all the time and you got to figure out like, all right, it didn't work. And time is on. me, Right. It's time. Like it was 955 and I ain't know it. So I got to figure this out. So I'm saying to you, sometimes you just got to be able to think on your feet and figure it out. So with that said, I got Nicole up here. But let me say this to you real quick, y'all, because I had my I didn't do my monologue. I'm going to keep it brief because she got to run soon. But my monologue real quick, quick. Hey, somebody out there. Hey, leader out there. If there's a teacher in your building that has no mentor, you got to fix that. How soon should you fix it? Monday morning. When you get back to work Monday, you got to fix that. If, if there's a teacher or like, like, like you got, when I say a teacher, let, let me, let me slow down. Cafe, slow down, slow down. So you got this new teacher in the building, been in, been with you two, three months and no mentor has been assigned. Well, I'm saying to you, you've got to assign that mentor. You got to assign that mentor. That, that new teacher should be under somebody's wing, maybe more than one person's wing, but you got to make sure that there's no new teacher in your building that's swimming these oceans, swimming these waves by him or herself. That's not fair. to It's not fair to a lot of people. Number one, it's not fair to the teacher. Number two, it's definitely not fair to the children. Number three, it's not fair to the school. Number four, it's not fair to you, the leader. Number five is not fair to the team in terms of what you're trying to do. Number six is not fair to the community because the school is a, is, 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 is a central part of the community and you brought in somebody new and they don't have a mentor. Make sure that every teacher in that building that's new, and I'm going to call new one to three years. Maybe that third year doesn't need the mentor, but that second year, at least start the year off and make sure that person's fine. But, that, but, but, but my real area of focus that first year no way in the world that that new teacher should be in your building swimming with no mentor. 
That person will probably quit by Christmas unless they're that passionate about the work that they say, I'm going to figure this thing out. Right. So that's on you. So that's that's my monologue. I got my guest up here, man. Let me let me. Hey, Nicole, how you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm 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 I guess I'm on fire. <laughs> hey, all we can do is keep it moving, right? Right. That's all we can do is keep it moving. You know, hey, y'all, fam. I want to read Nicole's bio. She's one of them people that really needs no introduction. But you know, I don't bring nobody on here without a bio. I, I speak a lot of places, and sometimes they get up there. The, the host thinks they know me. Like, yeah, Kafele, man, he's impacting the world. He's doing big things. He's written these books. I'm like, and here's what I do here. <laughs> uh read this <laughs> see i need i need i need credibility right it's, it, everybody in the audience don't know me it, it, i'm i'm not me i'm not willing to listen to people that i don't know what they've done i'm not that's a misusage of my time i gotta know you did something for me to sit there and listen to you because if if you're going to talk about what i do but you don't know what i do you ain't done what i do then, then i don't want to hear you i can do other things i can go read a book so I'm, so, I'm, so, I'm, so I'm very particular about bios. So here we go. Nicole S. Turner is a K-12 educational coach, author, speaker, trainer, and school improvement specialist, founder and CEO of Simply Instructional Coaching. She is also the founder of the Simply Coaching Summit, the first virtual summit exclusively for instructional coaches and teacher leaders. Nicole specializes in collaborating with principals and coaches to establish a conducive coaching environment while also providing guidance to principals without coaches, enabling to develop their coaching skills prior to conducive conducting evaluations. Additionally, she assists instructional coaches in mastering their roles while they support teachers in building sustained effectiveness in classroom teaching. Make sure my battery's still working. She has 18 plus years of K-12 classroom and leadership experience in positions such as classroom teacher, lead teacher, differentiated accountability coach, district and building level instructional coach, assistant principal, dean of students, advanced ed diagnostic review team member, and school improvement and turnaround specialist for the Indiana Department of Education. Y'all better hit that share button, man. You better let somebody know. We, 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 we got the goat in the building. Nicole has worked with thousands of educators, instructional coaches, and administrators across the United States through conferences, one-to-one -one and small group coaching, custom professional development sessions, or professional memberships include Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, National Sorority of Phi Delta Kappa, Indiana State Teacher Association, Indiana State Reading Association, and the Indiana Council of Teachers of Mathematics. She is the author of two pub published books uh, by Solution Tree uh, Press, Simply Instructional Coaching, Questions asked and answered from the field and simply instructional coaching planner. She has self-published the simple S-I-M-P-L-E. That's an acronym blueprint for instructional coaching workbook. When Nicole is not serving in various educational roles, she can be found spending time with her family, which can which consists of a supportive husband, three biological children and three bonus children. Now, normally, y'all, I bring up a. Um, the, the, I want to show you the books of the author. They put the charger like on the books. And I know if I move this thing <laughs> wrong, I'm going to lose it. So let me be careful. It's it's a different kind of Saturday, baby. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, charger's still working. Hey, y'all, let me let me put this up here real quick, y'all. Got my little screen. Uh, simply instructional coaching. Let me tell y'all something. I'm sitting at dinner. I'm in Montego Bay, y'all. My birthday's tomorrow. This is my annual birthday getaway. I'm sitting in the having dinner with my wife last night and I started talking about this book. I said to my wife, I said, this book, Simply Instructional Coaching, this is a Bible. This is a little different from a lot of stuff I read. If, if you are, you, you remember Harry Wong? And if you are a new teacher, that was automatic. You get in that book. Well, that's how I feel about this book. And I never gave this kind of endorsement to any books that I've had on here. If you're an instructional coach, you should not work one day, hear me, one day without having read this complete book, right? One day. This is it. Principal, order them in bulk for your assistant, for your instructional coaches. I have, I have no reason to plug this book because I, I don't know. We, Nicole and I know each other, but we, we ain't homies. We don't, you know, it's not like that, right? I just know that this is a great book. 
So get this book. This is the instructional coaching Bible. I'm putting my name on that. But then don't stop there. I got the blueprint, man. The simple blueprint. This is the planner. You got to have them both, man. So get make sure you get both. You can go to Amazon right now. Go on the other device and go on to Amazon and get it. I, I, I love these two books. I didn't read them, the, read them thoroughly, but I've been through every page, right? I'm going to read these books as if as if I was a principal and I needed to uh, hire an instructional coach and, and know it from that vantage point. Let's jump into it, Nicole. Um, as I ask every guest that I bring on here, Nicole, as an educator, just as an educator, who is Nicole S. Turner? Wow. wow. Okay. okay. <laughs> Jumping into it immediately. Um, so, um, so as, 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 an, as educator, an educator, I'm, I'm just, just truly, truly authentically, authentically passionate, passionate about, about um, um, our, kids, our kids, about, about making, making sure, sure that teachers get what it is that they need so that our, our students, students can, can have some have type some of type impact, of impact on, on the structure. structure. It is it really, is really, really important, important to me, to me. Um, um, now that I've been, been out in the field and I've been out working, out working with a lot, a lot of, districts of districts now and really doing, really doing all, all those types of things. things. I, don't, I don't have this. I hear you well. I mean, you, you, the, the video is, is a little, you know, it goes in and out, but the audio doesn't. Uh, you Unmute. You're muted. Uh, okay, can you hear me? Yeah. I still have that. Still have that. Let me turn my volume down again. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. All right. All right. Any better? It it doesn't it, matter. It doesn't I'm just, matter. Gonna, I'm keep just gonna keep talking. Yeah. And, 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 and by the way, your, y'all, uh, but let me let me let me let me say this real quick. Nicole, Nicole is uh, in the airport. She she missed her flight. Yes. Well, the flight was canceled <laughs> yesterday. Yeah, so we yeah. both we both got challenges, y'all. So just, you know, just just bear with us. Bear with us. Go ahead. Yes. No yeah, problem. No problem. Uh, you know what? No I'm going to do this. I'm going to mute while you speak. Go ahead. OK, can you hear me now? Oh, that's perfect. All right, perfect. All right, so um, as far as my goal, my goal is to really work with coaches and teachers um, to make sure that we empower every classroom for um, our students. And that is the biggest component uh, for me as an educator. I'm very passionate about working with my students, I'm very passionate about students actually learning um, and making sure that what it that teachers have what they need in order to make an impact and also to remove those barriers um, so that students can actually learn, right? So the teachers can actually teach. Um, and just like what you said, every new teacher that is out there should have someone or should have some type of support um, system out there. So that is kind of me as an educator and kind of why um, in a quick nutshell. <laughs> I love it. I love it. You know, um, and, and, and pro we probably should go back and forth when I'm on you mute and then when i and, and vice versa right and that way we make sure we keep it keep it clear for the video purposes you know um nicole you are obviously um uh, i call you a coach i call you an instructional coaching guru expert but instructional coaching like so many of other, other categories it's, it's it's a narrow area like like i like like my passion is principal leadership ap leadership it's it's very narrow as as opposed to all the other aspects or genres of of education so my question to you why instructional coaching um why do you have this 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 interest this expertise if not this passion in instructional coaching what is it about that so when i became a teacher um and if anyone knows you kind of remember the movie um back to superman or remembering superman back in the day um i was rift when i first became a teacher it was very different than what it is right now and so i was rift every single year every single year i was moved and moved and moved um and at this particular year it was about 300 of us that we got rift laid off um and we were sitting in a room um they created a cadre and so what we would do is is that we would go into some other um 
we would go into the teachers' classrooms and we would just, you know, let them um, kind of go to professional development. Well, I got a phone call because I was a, a decent in-classroom teacher and someone recommended me for the differentiated accountability coach position. I interviewed for it, um, I guess, in a, in a way of they called me downtown. I had a conversation and then they sent me off to a building. But when I arrived at the building, the principal had no idea what it is that I was supposed to do. Um, and so I was like kind of confused but it was, I was a coach. So I was like, okay, I'll figure this out. There was another coach there. Um, and he was, he had no idea, but the principal told me I needed to do three things. One, I needed to do morning duty, lunch duty, and dismissal duty. And I was like, okay, but that was it. So I had a district coach. The district coach came and told me, told me I had two things to do. I had to um, do some data sheets every single week. And then on Fridays, I'm um, on every Friday, the data sheet. And then I needed to make teachers better. I had no idea what it is that I was supposed to do. I started to Google. I started to, you know, try to find some books, try to find some resources, but no one could really tell me what instructional coaching did. Um, so over the years, I've kind of just developed ways of how to work with teachers and what it is that we had, um, you know, in different types of strategies. One of the biggest components is, is that I will purchase tons of different books or read other little things, but nothing ever told me how to get started, how to build those relationships, how to get in and work with teachers. And so then I just started to actually do it. Well, one particular year when Facebook groups were kind of a thing, I mean, we're just starting out, I decided to just get uh, um, an actual um, group. I just created a group. And then people start asking me all of these questions over and over and over and over and over again. And I realized that no one knew how to do coaching or how to start <laughs> to become a coach. And so people just start asking me these questions. And those questions are that Simply Instructional Coaching book. And so my passion lies in the fact that I know that teachers need some assistance, just like how you said at the beginning. They need some type of mentorship. But no one knows specifically what it is that we need to do. And also, when I worked in school improvement, I was a school improvement specialist for the Indiana Department of Education. And we did the whole big thing where they, you know, fired the principal and, you know, redid the staff and all of those kinds of things. And we would bring in people and they would be great. They would be awesome. But they didn't know how to create sustainability within our teachers. And so what we end up doing is it's like, yes, the school did great. It went from F it went to A. In those two years, that principal then moved on to another position and that school tanked. And it was because we never created that foundation and really building our teachers, that sustainability of them being able to really know how to do the things that were not taught to us when we were in school. And so it's just the small things that happen um, in the classrooms. And so that's, those are the things that I work with those instructional coaches to be able to become that mentor, to become that support person. Um, and that is how we build that sustainability in teachers where a principal can come and actually be able to lead but the teachers will be able to learn and it would be sustainable when those principals decide to leave that particular building. And so that has just become my passion and my work um, these past, I guess, like 10 years. Um, and so that is, that's, that's why, why I love coaching so much. That's powerful. Hey folks, we talking to Nicole Turner, author of, of simply instructional coaching, right? You don't have a copy go on your other device get yourself a copy this is a bible of instructional coaching you know uh nicole like so many things in education there's there's so many things out here that have just a multiplicity of different connotations different definitions like like you say you say sel to someone social emotional learning it means so many different things to so many different people and then quite frankly as i'm sure you know in some place places the connotation is so negative that they say we and we don't want it here you know uh culturally relevant pedagogy equity and i can go on and on uh they, they've got so many different meanings what is instructional coaching through the, the 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 brain of Nicole Turner? So for, so me, for me, instructional, instructional coaching, coaching is, well, through the brain of me, is being just the external eyes and ears for teachers. 
So just being that support system, that extra person to be able to give you some feedback, being a soundboard, being a person who can share their experiences with you, um, and being a person who is just there when you need them in order to figure out those issues so that we can move forward um, in in learning. A lot of times we go to professional developments and we do all of these different things and we learn, 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 right? Because we're learners um, and we get stuck. And then what do we do? When we come up against that, that um, hump, we just say, okay, I'm going back to what I know. But if I have that instructional coach, then right there, I have someone that I can break it down with and try to figure it out um, as we move forward. And so for me, that is what instructional coaching truly is. Love it. Let's get, let's, 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 let's dive deeper. You know, um, Nicole, for whatever the reason, whether it be when I'm on the road or just people write me, I hear from instructional coaches. I think it's more so when I'm in the, in the presence of them. And, and, and they say one of the things, one of the prevailing things that they'll say to me is, Principal Kefele, uh, I'm an instructional coach, but it's not always easy to forge relationship with teachers, with, partic with, with, with particular teachers. They'll say things like, um, like, like in, a, in, a, in a state where, or a district that's unionized, losing my camera, there we go. In a state, man, we tried. I need to. I need some tape or something. So, 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 in a in a state where it's unionized and the instructional coach is in the same bargaining unit with the teachers, right? They say in that case, it, it, sometime I go into a room, I go into an environment, and I'm not necessarily welcome because the you know the the the, the thought process is you know who are you you know who are you to tell me how to become better that type of thing, so. I noticed um, in your book, <clears throat> and I was really fascinated by this particular chapter, this section of a chapter, you, you talk about the top instructional coaching mistakes and how to avoid them. And I want to I want to list them for our audience. The top five instructional mistakes and how to avoid them, folks. Um, I, I, I had these written down for my computer. But I, I'm on the phone, y'all. I can't be messing around with this because, I, you know, I just got to keep it like keep working, baby. So let me just read them to you. Don't serve as the principal designee. That's number one. Don't evaluate teachers. That's number two. Number three, don't be the teacher's classroom assistant. Number four, don't be a know-it-all. Now, that's a very interesting one. I'm going to say it again. Don't be a know-it-all. And number five, don't expect change too quickly. Let's go through these one by one, Nicole, and keep in mind what time you got aboard that flight. And keep in mind, I got a whole lot of questions, right? So, uh, you know, so, so let's go to number one. Don't serve as the principal designee. What, what, what are you saying in terms of to avoid that? So, so in order in to order avoid to that, that, in the simple blueprint, um, the, the S-I-M-P-L-E, so it's an acronym, right? And it's S for setting a vision, I for introducing your role, M for making a plan, um, and that's about organization. And so that's the top of it that is your foundation. The setting a vision to avoid becoming the principal designee is setting a vision and getting clarity of your role. Um, and so at the beginning of every year, what I do is that I make sure that um, as an instructional coach, I meet with my principal um, and we sit down and we have a conversation around boundaries and what it is that they want me to expect and what it is that they um, don't want me to do. And, you know, all of those different things. So there's five different areas that we'll sit and we'll talk about um, for that particular role. And one of the things that I make sure that I have them to understand is, is that I'm not the person who takes over the building when you leave. So like, just because I don't have a classroom, I'm not that person that takes over the building. I have to build a relationship with the teacher so that they see me as a support and not see me as an administrator. Um, and so that's the whole, you know, scenario with that. Um, so I just make sure that having that meeting at the beginning of the year where you set what your vision is for your role, what the principal's vision is for your role, and you guys have that clarity. And then you make sure that they know, hey, when you leave the building, I can't be the person who um, takes over. I say this, uh, Principal Kefele, I say many times 
instructional coaches become Olivia Pope, right? They become the <laughs> person who end up taking and doing all of the small tasks um, and, and putting out the small fires when the principal can't get to that, or they assist the principal in doing those things. And so the question becomes, how does my role impact instruction? And does this task impact instruction? And if it doesn't impact instruction, then I shouldn't be doing it. And so that's what that means with that that component. I love it. And I, and I know that we, with time, I know you shortened the answer. I, I, I just want to throw this piece in that, that you say in the book, because if that teacher, if that instructional coach is that becomes that principal designee, um, when the principal has to lead a building, there's no APs in the building. And now I've taken on that role, as you said in the book, I'm just paraphrasing you. Then when the principal is back and you transition out of that role into instructional coach again, you may have compromised trust because that person is now seeing you in that administrator role because they got a taste of you in that administrator role. So as, as and I'm, I'm speaking for Nicole, she could say this or so I told her we're going to keep it brief so we can get a lot in. But that I, I just found that piece so important that you, you don't want to be in and out of roles because now they don't know how to see you. It's, it's like that trust may, may not be there because now it looks like, you, well, you must be reporting to the principal everything that we're talking about and all that kind of thing. If, if I screwed that up at all, Nicole, you, 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 clean, you clean that up for me. All right, let's go to that second one then. Don't evaluate teachers. Why not? Well, not evaluating teachers goes back to that same question before, switching in and out of roles. So your role as an instructional coach is supportive. Um, and it's not evaluative. And so you want to make sure that um, you actually gain that that trust, right? You build that trust and you want them to see you as a, as a person where they are, um, they can confide in you and they can really truly tell you their issues and their problems. If you, you're not going to go to your boss and say, you know what? I don't know how to, I really don't know how to do this, right? You're going to still have that wall up of like, yes, I can figure it out. This is exactly what I'm going to do. They're not going to be that vulnerable, but they are super vulnerable when they are with their instructional coaches and we want to keep them with that component, being able to be vulnerable. Now, if I evaluate you as an instructional coach, then I'm taking out that ability for my teacher to be vulnerable with me and to really dig down to the root cause of what it is that we need to get done. Um, and so that is the, the big component as to why I say that we should not um, evaluate our, our teachers. I, I love it. And, and you know, I, I just want to reiterate for, for the folks out here. We got leaders out here, y'all, and, and, and you have instructional coaches. I would say about 75 percent of you, because I know some don't, maybe maybe more, maybe less. But I'll say this. How how do you forge that 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 relationship, that 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 bond that where there's trust if you're serving in an evaluative role? You're just an administrator now. It's 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 just not the same thing, right? So I I, I love it. Let's go to the next one, Nicole. Um, don't be the teacher's classroom assistant. Yes. So sometimes we could get stuck in being the assistant. So what we try to do is that we try to build and help teachers to seek out resources, right? And we try to get them um, different things that they can hold on to, that they can actually implement um, and so on. So we'll go and we'll find some things. But I found myself in the beginning trying to build that relationship by saying, oh, I'll make your copies for you. Or, oh, I'll do this. Or, oh, I'll do that. Or, oh, I'll come and release you so you can go to the restroom. And I end up being stuck in that role. It's kind of like, um, you know, when you start dating someone and you're trying to say, okay, I'm in a friend zone or am I in like the dating zone? Like, do they like me? <laughs> do they not and so you want to make sure that you don't get stuck in the friend zone because you really really want to be with this person so or you really want to get to know them or like them so that's kind of the the role or the perspective that that you take you don't want to get stuck in being the assistant of being the person who's going to make the copies or the person who's going to do all of those things because I want them to see me as the external eyes and ears. I want them to see me as a, a thought partner and not as someone who's just gonna make their, their copies in their classroom.
You muted. You're muted. Uh, you still muted, Principal Cavale. I hit that button twice, man. One more time. We're talking to Nicole Turner, author of Simply Instructional Coaching. Get it on Amazon. All this information is in there and more. What a book. Let's go. Um, number four, Nicole, you said don't be a know-it-all. You know, that's now that's that's an interesting one. What do you got to say about that one? So, you know, sometimes people can just come in and say, hey, I did this. You're going to do this. You need to do this. You need to do that. This is what I think you need to do. We are always sharing what it is that we did and where um, how we became successful in the classroom because most instructional coaches are coaches because they were successful in the classroom. Um, but you have to remember that what we're not trying to do, um, I say this all the time, we're not trying to create separate wives. And if you saw the movie when they're, when they're inside of the, the, uh, the grocery store, they're all moving in the same direction and making the same terms and going down the same roads. But we're not trying to recreate ourselves. And so we have to make sure that what we're trying to do is we're trying to grow and bring out the best in every single teacher. And what we want to do is, is that we want to offer our support and offer our thoughts on what it is that we did in a classroom where we can share our expertise, but we can't force it upon teachers. And so we want to make sure that we don't shut them down and shut down their ideas because they're creative as well. And so we want to bring the best out in them. And so we can't just say, hey, well, I did this in my classroom and this is what you're going to do and all of that. The second part of that don't be a know-it-all scenario is that you don't have to know it all in order for you to build those trusts with teachers. You don't have to know everything about that content or every instructional strategy. You can show them, hey, let's Google this strategy together. Let's watch some videos together. Let's learn about this together. And then they will start to see you in that light of being a support person versus the light of she's just going to tell me what to do. Um, we start to take away the teacher's creativity and growing them as educators. Because remember, our whole goal is to build that sustainability in those teachers. And so we want to make sure that we don't shut them down, one, by them thinking that, you know, we know everything. Um, and second, we want to make sure that we start to grow them as each unique teacher that they are. I got, I got to remember that mute, that mute button. Hey, y'all, hit the share button, hit the retweet, hit the repost, tag somebody, hit those Facebook groups, uh, those leadership groups. Let let folks know we're here and, and, and Nicole Turner is bringing the information. You know, Nicole, before we go to the fifth one, I, I want to stay on that fourth one. Um, I had to learn that, you know, in terms of being this know-it-all. If, if, if I'm around a group of people, and I don't mean in terms of my professional environment, I just mean a group of people and 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 they want to hear me preach about whatever then then fine I'll, I'll 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 perceive those cues and i'll go ahead and preach the sermon that they're looking for me to just hold court with whatever it is but on the other hand if if that's not what they're looking for but they want to have a conversation but i'm trying to hold court and just preach a sermon then they really it's really not a conversation because I'm coming across as this know-it-all as opposed to let's have an exchange of ideas. So that's so important. You know, you all out there in the in, in the family, think about that in your interactions with folks that you have. Are is is it an is it an exchange? Because see, like when I started this platform four years ago, for 52 consecutive weeks, it was just me. I didn't bring on guests, I didn't feel like I needed to. But after them 52 weeks, I said, wait a minute, I don't know it all. There's so many people out here, so many voices like yours, Nicole. They can they can add tremendous value to this platform. I need to start tapping into them. And I think that that's really what took this thing to another level, because I don't have to sit back and pretend that I know everything. I can bring on people here that know a lot more than I know about a variety of different things as it relates to leadership. So think about that, folks. Do it. Don't don't do. Don't be a know it all. Let's go to the last one. Don't expect change too quickly. Now, that's interesting because sometimes you all are working for somebody who expects change to happen yesterday. Right. And yet here comes Nicole saying, hold up, pump the brakes. Don't expect change too quickly. Talk to us, Nicole. 
Yes. Yeah, so in my experience, <laughs> yes, that's exactly what it is. We have principles that are like, I need it changed immediately. I need someone's uh, mindset to be changed immediately. And people just don't work like that. Um, people have to build trust over time. They have to see the relevance. They have to see the value um, before they actually start to change. It's a lot of psychological background stuff that goes on when you are actually coaching and working with others. And so you, what you want to do is you want to kind of take them small. I mean, um, at small points. I guess it's kind of like that saying where you got to, um, is it slow down to go fast? Um, a lot of people say that. And so that's where this perspective comes, is that we have to slow down. We have to get down to the root cause. We have to build the foundation um, with working with our teachers. And then you'll start to see that growth. And you'll start to see that change over time. Now, what we want to see is growth. We don't necessarily have to see a whole mindset change, but we definitely want to start to make sure that we some some type of growth um, that's going to happen with the teachers. So therefore, Nicole, let's look at administration with overcoming that challenge. Of, of 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 being able to forge these these real these authentic these these trustworthy relationships and considering these things that you'd said that we should not do we should avoid what is the role of administration then toward ensuring that the instructional coach slash teacher relationship is productive for that school So the first thing, um, when I was in my position as an assistant principal, what I noticed um, was that we needed to start to create an environment or a coaching culture. I'm saying that from the perspective of this. If I walk into a classroom and I give a pretest, right? And when I give the pretest, say, for instance, I have 30 kids, 15 of my kids are on grade level, 15 or not. And I turn and say, I'm only going to teach the kids that are below grade level. And I'm not going to touch any of the kids that are. I would be fired. We would not have jobs, right? Because our goal is to grow all 30 of those kids in the classroom. And as a leader, as administrators, our job is to grow all of our teachers. And so what I've experienced lately, um, which goes beyond the book because I've been more in fields and districts, is that as leaders, they are only assigning or having coaches work with teachers who are struggling or who are new or who are uncertified. They're not growing the actual teachers who are, say, hitting the 80%, right? But we still have 20% left to go. Um, And so because of that, Teachers are becoming resistant to coaching. Just think, would you want to know if you were in the red group? Like, okay, I'm in the red group. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Like, now I got to really, I don't want, they're becoming resistant because they feel as though it's an attack on them. They feel as though it is, um, I'm only being assigned because I'm a bad teacher right? Or because I'm not a good teacher or because I'm weak in this, when we all have an opportunity to grow. So as a leader perspective, you have to create a culture where everyone in the building gets some type of coaching. And that coaching is not punitive, but coaching is necessary for growth. And so that's what I've been working with administrators for them to see from that eye lens of all of our teachers need some type of coaching. Now, each teacher does the individual coaching. There are some teachers that need individual coaching, and we're going to work with those teachers individually, just like if we were in the classroom. All of our students are going to get tier one instruction, right? But then there are some tier two and tier three students that are going to get just a little bit more so that they can get what they need to get them back to tier one so that they can grow. And so as an administrator, we have to start to bring in that whole culture of coaching where coaching is not punitive. Coaching is about growth. Coaching is about, you know, empowering every classroom, every teacher, so that every student will have an impact. I love it. I love it. I love it. I'm I'm, I'm just keeping it moving because of of that flight you got. You know, um, Nicole, there's there's a there's a passage in your bio that I read earlier, and I want to I want to read this passage. It says Nicole specializes in collaborating with principals and coaches 
to establish a conducive coaching environment while also providing guidance to principals without coaches, enabling them to develop their coaching skills prior to conducting evaluations. So with that said, there are a lot of principals out here that do, as you said, do not have APs and do not have instructional coaches. And for me, Although I, I, I still talk instructional leadership and coaching to these principals, the bottom line is they've got a lot on their plate. They can't be necessarily that principal that spends 80% of the time either in classrooms or coaching because they don't have that other person unless they figure out how to empower others around them, particularly those aspiring leaders, those aspiring instructional coaches, then let me tap into these people. So with that said, given the demands on that leadership and knowing that you work with principals and assistant principals what are what are, what are your thoughts on how these leaders make the most of the time that they do have towards ensuring that instructional coaching is is an inherent part of their overall leadership yes, yes. And, so and so you are completely, you are completely right. right oh there we go. <laughs> I can hear the echo. Um, yeah, so you're completely right. There are a lot of instruction, I mean, a lot of principals and assistant principals who don't have instructional coaches in their building. And so we have to be mindful of that. And so the biggest thing that I say is that we learn how to coach before we evaluate. So there are many times that we have to do um, so many walkthroughs, right? And so having that walkthrough scenario happen um, as a coaching type walkthrough um, and then having before we get to the evaluation. So if teachers start to see that your walkthroughs that you have to do um, are actually walkthroughs where you're providing feedback, you're providing um, next steps, you are giving suggestions, you are working with them um, on how to get better in that area before they actually get to that coach, I mean, that evaluation, they and you give them the opportunity to grow. You also get them the opportunity where they will be able to um, get, they'll be able to put their perspective on it or they'll be able to have conversations now. So I work with a principal um, now and she doesn't have a coach in her building. And so what we've started to integrate is, is that when she does walkthroughs, she does video feedback. Um, and so it's not where it's typed out. She'll go into do her little quick walkthrough, look for whatever it is that they were looking for. And they kind of talked about um, she kind of, you know, had like a, a quick little meeting or email with the teacher. Say, hey, I want you to come in. I want you to look at this specific thing. And then she'll go in. She'll kind of look at what is happening. And then she'll step out in the class in the hallway and she'll record a quick video. And so then she'll just say, hey, here are some things that I think that are great that you can work on. Here are some other suggestions. Um, let me know your thoughts um, when I'm going to come back in on this particular day or whatever it is um, and try to give you some more feedback on how to get better or this was great or this was not great. Um, and so she's able to provide that video feedback. In addition, she also has a couple of different um, teachers that she's working with that are videoing themselves and sending her the video so that she can provide feedback of what's happening in the classroom. And she's doing that with two, which are her her higher tiers of teachers that she needs to really work with, um, specifically around more classroom management type things, um, of feedback of things that they talked about implementing. All of this is happening um, before she is officially evaluating them in December. And so we're utilizing some technology um, to kind of help with managing those those times where it's like okay i can't be in the classroom all the time but i am required to do these walkthroughs but why should these walkthroughs be punitive why these walkthroughs we can change it we can change the perspective of these walkthroughs are not punitive what the district really wants to know is am i getting in a classroom and am i am i giving feedback to my teachers and so yeah i'm giving them feedback and i'm giving them video feedback and we're we're having video conversations right so the teacher will 
video um, her back a response and kind of say, okay, this is this, this is that, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, they can also do it. So those are two different ways. Well, that particular principle is actually communicating and providing feedback um, and coaching that teacher prior to her ever evaluating that teacher. So she'll be able to see that growth over time um, with that. So those are just a couple of the ways that we can kind of include um, some of those coaching aspects within that. Also, with principals who don't have coaches, they're able to start um, creating opportunities for peer coaches to happen in the class, in, in their building. So you can pair teachers. One thing that we did um, a, a while ago in one of my buildings was we did this thing called small groups, where we started with our school improvement plan, you know, the one that everyone does in August and December and never looks at ever again for the rest of the year. <laughs> But we actually aligned um, some specific things to that school improvement plan. And what we did was we um, we put the teachers in small groups. And so within those small groups, they were uh, they only had to observe each other. So for five teachers, they only have four people. But together as a building, what we did was we took whatever that goal was at a school improvement plan and we assigned what it looked like and what it sound like in this building. So making sure that it was, okay, these are our kids. This is what we want to see. This is what we want to have um, happen in our building uh, uh, aligned to that particular standard. And so what we do after that is that then we um, did the rubric and then they put the teachers in the small groups. And so they had a teach a team lead in each one of those groups. And so teachers were able to give feedback to each other and coach each other through those processes. The team lead would then give me some general ideas of what teachers needed more of. And that became my professional development plan rather than for me to just say, oh, okay, I have you know, these set of things that I'm going to teach for the year. No, it became a fluid thing. The topics became fluid based on what the teachers needed, based on what they were seeing in each other's classrooms. And so that's another way that you can utilize the people that are in your building and teachers in your building that can coach and create that coaching culture prior without even having an actual instructional coach. So I hope that kind of makes sense. I gave like three points. It makes a lot of sense. In fact, um, I found it downright fascinating. Um, and, and, you know, particularly around the, the, the whole idea of having a teacher videotape for a, a, a leader that doesn't have instructional coaches, APs in the building, and, and therefore not having the ability to visit classrooms at the level that he or she may want to. But that whole idea, now that we're in this age where everybody's walking around with a camera in their pocket or their purse, it's, it's very easy to to do the video, um, to video somebody and then principal can take a look at it and forge the relationship from there. You know, no, I, I find that I find that to be fascinating. Everything that you just say, um, we good on time. Talk to us about the um, the administration, the administrator instructional coach relationship. What should that what 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 should that really look like? So the principal coach, I their relationship really should be more about of a collaboration of them both bringing their strengths to the table um, and being able to, you know, go out and really support teachers. When we talk about being servant leaders and we talk about being coachable leaders, then we are, we have to switch that lens, right? We have to make sure that we're giving the teachers everything that they need to do in order to be successful. And so that's the, the number one scenario that both of them are focused on really helping to build the teacher's capacity. That's number one. Number two, creating boundaries that there is not a power struggle. Sometimes as leaders, we get into this, this thought process of, oh, well, I'm the leader and they're going to do what I say do. How dare they say this or how dare they do that? You know, that kind of scenario. But let's look at us as the collaborators and let's look at us as supporters of teachers. And so we don't become, we don't have that 
that battle or that power struggle um, in the building. If a teacher comes to the principal to discuss what the instructional coach is doing, then the principal needs to hear out what the teacher is saying, bring the instructional coach in, and let's all have a conversation together so that we can move on. Not where the principal is like, okay, well, I'm going to talk to her, or I'm going to get on her, or I'm going to do, you know, we have to have that united front, you know, between the principal and the coach together so that they can really help um, each other, you know, kind of move forward. Um, I've seen where <laughs> I've definitely seen the power struggle happen um, within the building. Also, the principal, the, the instructional coach needs to understand their role. I look at it as the leader being the, the captain of the ship, right? They are the ones that are responsible at the end of the day. They are responsible for everything that happens in that building. And as an instructional coach, my job is to support my principal in getting there um, and making sure that their vision is actually you know, being had in the in in the building, and so I make sure that that um, happens as well. I'm trying to think of a couple of other things specifically that I know um, about the collaboration. It's just you know making sure that you you guys are on the same page. I can't, I cannot say any more clearer that a principal and a coach needs to have clarity in the role um, and understanding. And it's nothing like clarity of what's going to happen, what's not going to happen, what you guys do, um, having those expectations set, having that end of the year goal, what it is that I'm looking for my coach to have done by the end of the year. Like all of those things help to bring and build that relationship. With anything in life, you have to start to build the relationship to build the trust, right? And so principals have to trust that their instructional coach is going to support them and help those teachers become amazing teachers. Sometimes the principal can feel some type of way and, and not really trust their instructional coach. And so they come behind them and they, you know, <laughs> talk behind them and over talk them and, you know, all of that kind of stuff. And so you guys have to really sit down. And once you get that clarity of the role, you should be able to really, um, allow that coach to be the coach. Um, micromanagement needs to go out the door. There's no point in micromanaging an instructional coach um, because the instructional coach definitely, if you have that, if you have that uh, relationship really built and that trust built, then you can trust that they're going to do all of the things that you need them to do and not necessarily micromanage um, everything that they do because they're building those relationships with teachers as well. The the information that you're sharing, Nicole, is powerful, empowering, and invaluable, right? Um, folks, let them know, you know, share the video later that, um, and, and, and we're only, you know, this book, Simply Instructional Coaching, it's it's not a quick read. It's, it's 190, 195 pages. There's a lot there, but it's but it's an easy read. So you don't need the thesaurus next to you in order to read this book, right? It's uh you it's you gonna understand it very quickly. You know, Nicole uses this word clarity. I notice a lot, and it's very clear what she's stating in the book. So I'm gonna use that as my transition. You you talk so much about clarity between the leadership and the coaches to the extent that you created the, the, the simple blueprint for instructional coaching, for clarity that you created and it helps in aiding principals and coaches to gain that clarity. So, so I, wanna, I wanna give them this, what, what the, the, the strands of this simple blueprint, um, this S-I-M-P-L-E, and I don't have all this on the screen folks because it's on my computer, but I ain't got time to be messing around with this phone because this, this thing is balancing to stay up straight. I don't want it to tilt over, right? So here we go. The S, start with a vision. The I, introduce your role. The M, make a plan. The P, provide strategic support. The L, launch coaching cycles. And the E, engage in professional learning now just that simp that acronym that's a master class y'all right that's that's i mean she could spend the entire day just on the simple blueprints i'm not asking nicole to get a, get into all that specificity having to board a flight in about a about a half hour right instead 
um nicole just tell us what you state what you're saying let's give me give me the give me the brief synopsis uh start with a vision what are you saying yes i probably could spend a thousand days talking about <laughs> simple blueprint. But um, what I'm going to do, uh, Principal Confele, I'm just going to go through the whole uh, blueprint and kind of just give a quick uh, quick synopsis of, of all of the um, acronyms. So the S is set the vision or start with the vision. That's that clarity component. Um, a lot of times we have um, principals and coaches that don't they don't have the same vision. Principals, um, they have a vision. They may have Googled it. Sometimes instructional coaches are just thrown on principles. They don't really know what it is. Um, they've heard of it. They know that the model works, right? We have a lot of research that says the model works, but we don't know how to support our instructional coaches. Um, and we don't know what training instructional coaches have. Now, I will make sure to say this. A lot of instructional coaches are put in place into the instructional coaching role because they were great classroom teachers and then they transition, but never given any type of professional learning. There's really not a lot of professional learning out there. So like teachers go to teacher programs and principals go to principal programs. Instructional coaches don't really go to instructional coaching programs. And so they go out and they Google, they, they may buy the Simply Instructional Coaching book or some other different books that are out there. And so they have a vision of what this role should look like. So if the principal has one vision and the coach has another vision, we have to marry those visions to get that clarity. So that's what that component, the S, is all about. With that clarity, one, you can build that relationship with your coach. You can build the relationship with the building. You, you be able to really be able to um, flourish the role. Um, the I stands for introducing your role. Um, in this position, as an, as an administrator, what you need to do is support your coach in the way in which they introduce the role through as a supportive piece. They are the support of professional development, embedded professional development right within the building. But teachers need to see that and they will only understand that a coach's role is supportive if the administrator says they're non-evaluative, they are supportive of you. This is the way in which they work with you. And then the coach is able to do the same thing. The coach is able to say, hey, this is the way I can work with you. These are some things that I can share with you and so on. And in the simple blueprint, I talk about the five H's and you know the heart, the hand, the heels, those different ways in which you can really talk um, and support your, your actual teachers. So the M is the make a plan. And so you need to plan for coaching. You also need to plan your space um, and you need to plan your week. A lot of times as we transition from instructional coach to, I mean, from teacher to instructional coach, we don't know what to do with our time. You know, when we were a teacher, you were given your schedule for the day. You know, when you were going to eat, when you were going to check this, when you were going to do PLC meetings, when were you going to do, you know, you had someone to give you that. And so now we need to really sit down and um, figure out what our day looks like. When are we going to get to our coaching? When do we do responsibilities? Um, that, that, that's the big component of how we are going to uh, work through that process. So really making sure that you make a plan for your coaching. So the SIM is your foundations. Those are all the foundational things that need to happen before you ever get in a classroom to start coaching. Now we start talking about the PLE, and that's the work of coaching. That's what it is that you actually do as a coach. So the P stands for provide strategic support. That is where we actually go in and we tier our teachers for support. Not every teacher gets the exact same support, the same as when we are in the classroom. Not every classroom um, student gets the exact same support. So we're going to differentiate that. Some teachers are going to need more time than instructional coach. Some teachers are going to just need to be coached throughout um, the collaborative team meetings or, you know, PLCs as some people may call them. Um, so we want to make sure that we give that, um, that support the way it needs to be supported. And then we have L, which is the launching of coaching cycles. Um, and that is how we get into the work of actually doing some coaching cycles with the teachers. Um, I have a, a blueprint, uh, um, a framework, I guess you will say, it's called the Simple Core Four. And those are the ways in which I um, have coaches to work with teachers. Um, and so it's a trajectory framework and it starts with, first it starts with organization and then it starts with management and culture. And then it goes into um, working with teachers through content and instructional execution. A lot of times as administrators, we go in looking directly for instructional execution. But 
it's those foundational pieces that build that sustainability and that teaching and learning. Those good things that happen that no data, I mean, no no research could ever say that we shouldn't work and do <laughs> in those those basic things. Um, and so we're going to make sure that um, within those the the launching of the coaching cycles, we have coaching conversations and organization to build relationships. We're going to work with helping teachers to create management and culture through coaching cycles. And then with the content, we're going to do content planning meetings where we're unpacking the standards and really building out strong lessons through time mapping. And then we're going to now help teachers to execute that using those instructional strategies. Okay. So that's through that L component of that launching of coaching cycles. And then E is that engaging in professional learning and engaging teachers in professional learning doesn't mean it's a sit and get PD, right? It doesn't have to be that just like what I talked about earlier, well, you can put teachers in small groups. You can, in your actual data dives, you can use actual student work and get up and have teachers um, do a, a walk where they give examples of how they can reteach something based off of student work that came actually of that classroom. And now teachers can have take away different strategies. So we're making sure that um, our professional learning is not just a sit and get, but it's actual teachers working through um, the processes of really building out strong um, instructional strategy knowledge and content knowledge. So that's the simple blueprint itself. And it's really helping um, for the teacher, the, the, the coach to become organized um, and the coach to actually get to work. Because Principal Kefela is so many coaches that are out there that just don't know what to do or how to get started. And we're wasting that time where our teachers can't, um, our teachers are not being supported Therefore, we're not making an impact. Therefore, our babies are suffering. It's man, you, you, you said a lot there, you know, and, you know, like, like I said before, and you agree, the simple blueprint could be a master class. I'm sure you do it that way. There's just so there's so much in there to unpack. I, I definitely I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reach out to you um, like later today or tomorrow and, and, and schedule you for May. And because um, that's my next where I got an opening. And so we can go further with some of this because we, we're both rushing. Right. So um, but but with that, it was asked that your simple core for someone asked um, a listing for of them again. So let me since I'm unmuted, this, the four are organization, management and culture, content, instructional execution. Right. So again, organization, management and culture is the on one line content, instructional execution. And several keep asking me about the book. Here we go. It's two books, simply instructional coaching. This is the, the text, so to speak. And then you got the blueprint, the simple blueprint right here. And you can go to Amazon and get them both. Um, and and, and uh, Nicole will give you the website in a little while, but you can go to either place. I always say Amazon because that way I can. Amazon, when I have an author on, is data for me because then I can look at the data on, in, in terms of the sales, the sales of that given day, that weekend, and see what impact this platform had on book sales of an author. You know, just in terms of folks going out and getting those books and making them a part of their professional development library, right? So, uh, with that said, you know, Nicole, um, if I can find where I was, here we are. Another area of view area of interest for you is this language um a, co a a coaching culture within the district or school and you've talked about that a little as well and i say all the time culture is everything when folks come to me talking about this behavioral problem this discipline problem and we need more people that handle discipline and all i say you, you it's, you don't have a discipline problem. You don't have a, a behavioral problem. You have a problem with the culture of the building and it's receiving so little attention. I think I did a whole sermon on that last Saturday, so I won't do that again today. But, but what I want you to do, just talk to us about this whole culture of coaching that is necessary within a school. Sure. So the same thing, um, Principal Capella, as you say, if there's behavior issues that are happening, things need to be addressed. And so creating a culture just means that a coaching culture just means that everyone understands that coaching is something to help make you better and is not punitive. 
And so it's a, a thing that we do first, right? And so this bringing about the culture of understanding of the mindset of, hey, I'm going to be coached. I'm going to be helped. I'm going to be supported prior to me being completely evaluated. Um, and so that's bringing out the the actual culture, creating where people first go to help each other versus to evaluate each other or to talk about one another or, you know, to, to downrate each other. So that is the, the biggest thing, making that shift, making that mindset, and then having an, a, a culture where everyone feels safe enough and vulnerable enough for them to share that they don't know say, it's okay that I don't know something. And, you know, we walk around like, oh yes, I know this and I know that and I'm this and I'm doctor this and I'm doctor that. And it's like, okay, really? We all can grow. <laughs> we all can grow. We all can learn. Um, just like you said earlier. So it's, it's, it's really helping to create the mindset and create the environment where teachers feel as though they're being helped, they're being served, and they're being supported in their role. Come on, there we go. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, um, again, I'm, I'm gonna say this. Just this is just for the benefit of the of the uh, the fam that's watching this morning. Everything that Nicole says, I want to I want to have a conversation, but she's got to board a flight. I'm on this cheesy phone. And um, so we just can't do it the way I want to do it. And I'm rushing so I can get through it all. But we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna bring her back. And because this it's 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 a whole lot in here, y'all. <laughs> so I ain't worried about content, right? So um, but with that, let me let me ask you this final question because I know you got to start getting ready. Um you talk about the the importance of coaching before evaluation and i know that i've been on this platform as recent as last week um talking about the same thing i mean you're going to evaluate somebody and you haven't coached them you're going to go in their classroom and observe instruction but there was no prior conversation which is rooted in coaching talk to us as as i'll let this be the last question and if we have time i'll do those rapid fire questions if there's time but talk to us about the significance of, of just that, of, of coaching before an evaluation takes place. Yes, yeah, so um, for me, just think of this. If we walked into a classroom and we say we're, we're teaching fifth grade and we gave a test, right to those students and then we got the test back and we were like okay at the end of this this is your final grade right i'm gonna hold them to an expectation of something that i've never taught them right i never shared anything i never taught and i'm going to give them this final grade we would never do that in the classroom so why do we do that to adults Right. Why do we hold people accountable for things that we have not helped them to become better at or things that we haven't taught them or things that we haven't assisted them with? And so that e evaluate, I mean, coaching before evaluating means that I'm actually pouring in and I'm teaching and I'm guiding and I'm growing my teacher prior to me ever evaluating. I'm holding them accountable for things that we that I actually told them. <laughs> <laughs> but if I go in and I just, like you said, if I just go in and I evaluate and I say, okay, yeah, this is it. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, I, yeah, you should have learned this when you were in you know, at the school or you should have, you've been teaching four years. You should know this already. We don't do that to kids. We should not do that to adults. And so that's where that comes in. We have to make sure that we coach, that we give assistance, that we help to grow, that we teach, right? If we're servants and we're teaching and we're coaching leaders, then we are teaching and guiding and growing teachers before we get to the evaluation. Now, if, Teachers don't accept the growth and they don't, I mean, if they're not accepting of our coaching and they're not accepting of our, of what we're teaching, then we can hold them accountable for not growing, right? It's just like as a parent, you know how you tell your son not to do that and you said it not to do that and you said not to do that and then they do it. Now you hold them accountable, but you told them not to do it. 
And so, you know, that's the, the perspective that I come from is that when we have that coaching leadership, we have that servant and coaching leadership kind of married, then we are really making sure that we grow and we give assistance and we teach our teachers um, how to be the best or, or pull out the best of them before we ever get to that evaluation. Nailed it. That's um that's great stuff. And that's, you know, I, I believe I believe that with every fiber of my being. Look, Nicole, it's eleven seventeen uh Jamaican time, um, twelve seventeen your time. I'm not going to do the rapid fire because I'd have to go in and out of this mute button, and so would you. So we'll we'll do that on our next go round. I'm gonna send you I'm gonna text you a date later on. But let's 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 let me let me let me say this to you. Let me thank you um for a powerful session despite you know my challenges on my end um this 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 was powerful but i look forward to getting back with you and um when i'm in my my home environment and trusting my technology and being able to have the conversation that i want to have around this but to the fam out there you know how we do man if you if you enjoyed this if it was if it, if it resonated with you if it added value if it was useful to you um give us some emojis y'all uh let us know uh that's the way we do on this platform that's the way we applaud our guests and quite frankly when i go solo it's the way y'all applaud me so give us those emojis so that we can see that this was not a misusage of your time that it was not a waste of your time that you did not find it robbery as they would say in the baptist church to uh to be on and i see all those emojis coming man all four platforms man let it let it rip man facebook twitter youtube and linkedin oh man i see it i see it i see it and uh and i and i thank you for it nicole uh while they're putting these emojis keep them coming y'all you're muted come on let them know how to um how they should reach how they can reach you so that they can bring you on in the district so you could spend a full day with them yes perfect thank you so much uh principal Cafele, for having me here um i really appreciate that uh, a couple of things. One, my birthday was on Sunday, so we are October babies together. So I <laughs> will say that. Um, second thing, you can reach me um, at simplyinstructionalcoaching.com. Um, that is the the website. One thing um, I do have, if you go to simplyinstructionalcoaching.com, there will be a private podcast for administrators. Where I'll be launching it in uh, the second week of November. So it's a free private podcast specifically for administrators, going a little bit deeper of what uh, me and and uh, Principal Kafele have talked about today um, around that. So if you go and sign up on a wait list, you'll be the first to kind of know about that. Um, a last thing is you can email us at support at simplyinstructionalcoaching.com if you want me to come there or you want some books or you need guidance. Um, uh, additionally, there is a study guide that is also in the books. If you go to simplyinstructionalcoaching.com forward slash books, it's a free study guide that you can download for Simply Instructional Coaching if you want to do it with your staff or with your administrators, uh, I mean, or with your uh, coaches in the, the buildings or in the district, then you can just download um, that, download that free guide there. Um, and I have to I have to plug Principal Kafele, who is one of our uh, featured workshop speakers at the Simply Coaching Summit for 2024. I am so excited. Um, the tickets are, the, the registration and all that opens up um, next week on Monday, actually. So um, I'm excited for him to, to come on my end <laughs> and I'm able to kind of host him there. Um, and then we do have the Simply Instructional Coaching Podcast um, that is on all podcasts where you can download season two drops on November. 7th. I appreciate that. And, and, and Dr. Sheikah Houston always hooks me up with when I when I don't have the um, the the information on 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 because I don't have it on my phone here. So simply instructional coaching dot com. Thank you, Doc. Always. And one more time, folks, here's the book. Simply instructional coaching. Go to Amazon and pick it up or go to the website. Either way, I just like Amazon so I can track them sales numbers. And then here's the blueprint, simple blueprint, same place. You can get it there, right? And um, and then everything else that, she, that, that Nicole has out there. 
Look here, y'all. I'm um let me let me before you leave, Nicole, stay there with me. You still got a few more minutes before that plane. So let me stay with me when I sign off. Uh folks, uh appreciate you being here as always. Always, always, week 182. I want you to join me next week for 183. I'll be in Nova Scotia next week, so I'll be doing it remotely. And 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 Jacqueline hook me up so that I don't have no glitches next week, man. Right. She's on here right now, Jacqueline Harriet. I'll be on week number 183 with Dr. Chika Akua. Right. I'm sure many of you know Dr. Akua. So Dr. Chika Akua will be my Akua will be my guest next Saturday at 1055 Eastern. Make sure that every Saturday, Facebook Live, Sean Hurt at 10 o'clock, create and educate with Dr. Chika Houston, Dr. Tammy Taylor at 1030. Unlock the middle with my man Josh Tovar and Dean Packard on Sunday nights at seven. And then Village Leadership Group with Dr. Roz Gaskins and Coach Williams Tuesdays and Thursdays at six o'clock. My books, you know what they are. Go to Amazon if you don't have copies yet. The Assistant Principal 50, the Assistant Principal Identity, and get yourself a copy. Make sure you visit principalcafele.com. Got a lot of stuff on there, man. Everything ain't for sale. Some things you just you just check it out. You know, the blog posts, the videos, etc. Um, subscribe to the AP and New Principals Academy youtube channel make sure you subscribe we up to nineteen thousand five hundred, man y'all been y'all been still coming on there so nineteen thousand five hundred subscribers you know my goal is twenty thousand so make sure that you subscribe and then you can binge watch watch all 182 sessions like and follow the ap and new principles academy facebook page even though i'm here in jamaica even though tomorrow is my birthday i will have an um an essay a commentary a written commentary posted tomorrow morning it might not be the same time because i'm in a different time zone it's eastern time zone but they don't do daylight savings so i'm actually an hour behind it's like i'm in central right now even though they call it eastern but i'll have it up and then lastly your diet exercise and COVID 19 precautions whatever you got to do take care of yourselves and oh somebody just reminded me i, I I'm, I'm 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 just i'm flustered my back man I bring a little portable back when I'm on the road. You hit a grand slam, Nicole. You hit it out the park. I'm rocking my Memphis, uh, my Memphis Tigers Negro League jersey. You hit it out the park. You came to bat four times, so 16 runs. You did it. So thanks for reminding me of that, y'all. You know I don't go nowhere without, without nowhere without my little bat. So with that said, y'all, have a great week. Have an extraordinary week. Have your best week yet. Peace. Peace. Thumbs up. Cock that fist back. One, two, three. Bam. I'll see y'all next Saturday. Make sure you have a great week. And I'll see you Saturday at 1055 Eastern time.